got to make this part as quick as possible because I don't have much of a voice. I don't have much breath. A quick update based on my prior video stating that I had COVID. Apparently, I was starting to get a bit of an issue on Sunday morning and didn't even realize it because I have allergies and it was just like allergy symptoms. So, but it makes sense in the all in all of things. Thankfully, I wasn't around anybody on Sunday because I didn't go to church. I stayed home uh, because I wasn't feeling right. Good move on my part. Anyway, I just want to let you know that I'm doing okay, kind of up and down. I did have a visit to the ER yesterday. I've been keeping track of my pulse ox with this little guy, which is useful if I can get it in the camera. I have a nurse checking up on me on a daily basis. Uh, which is great. I love COPD and asthma. Yay. So please enjoy the film and God bless. Thank you for those who watch every film and thank you for those new. Thank you for those old. God bless you. Enjoy. Beautiful sunny afternoon. My current modus operandi is to go creek fishing. <laughs> I'm in that kind of a kind of a way right now where I just enjoy fishing. I went earlier today uh, in my car up by Hammer Creek and did a bunch of crappie fishing. I caught a little white crappie out of the Hammer Creek, just one after the other. Little ones, nothing huge. There were two that were that would have been Hannibal. Could have put them in a pan and had dinner. For the most part, they were just little buggers. Creek chubs. I learned a little bit more about what they were. And well, the species itself, I knew they were creek chub, but I didn't realize they got as big as they do. Apparently, they can get up to eight or nine inches, eight to ten, I guess. And the weird little things on their heads are called tubercules. Tu tu tuber? Uh, tubercules? They don't have tuberculosis, though. I'm going to start off with this creek over here, and then there's another place I wanted to try a little further up. I have the collapsible fishing pole that I bought. It's an eagle claw, same as a hook company. And that's fine and dandy as far as it goes, however, not a very great pole. But in a pinch, it'll do the job. So I've got it rigged up with just a little curl tail grub, and we'll see what happens. Yeah, I'm just going to fish off the bridge. And then I only want to turn off my scooter. Yeah, I think I'm going to do. Right or left side? I'm going to go over here. I can just pop my leg over and fish right there. That'll work. Okay. This should be hard. Get this out enough so that I can uh, open up the rod. This is actually really cool. It doesn't say what weight of lines on it from the manufacturer, but I'm going to assume that it's based on what I'm seeing here. It's about a six or ten pound line. So let's toss it down and see what happens. This is the same lure I was using the other day and pulling a bunch of creek chub out of here. I do not like the way that this rod has so much action on the tip. I think I would be better on the other side, looks like. This pole reminds me of the material that my first fishing pole was made of. It was a kind of, sort of fiberglass, but I think that's what this is. I think it is fiberglass. But it's just cheaply made. I don't know, I guess for a pole that I only paid 30 bucks for, I can't really expect much. It does well enough for medium lures. I would call this... Uh, medium to light action lure. The action of the lure is good, so that's a positive. I just don't like the way the rod feels. It's got too much movement. And despite the, the action not being horrible, this has a nice weight to it. Probably again because it's pretty much fiberglass. It's fine for medium weight lures like this one. Do the old switcheroo. And go to the super lightweight. So amazed at how those crappie were hitting this little lightweight lure earlier today. It was a super lightweight lure, so 
the only downside of it is you got to make sure that it sinks far enough to get down to where the fish are. And this is kind of cold weather fishing, so it's also a cooler day than Friday when I was fishing down here. Oh, hey, something's going after it. There's stuff going after it. There's nobody being committal. It's all right. I think I know where I will go. It's a uh, bridge that I have not fished from yet. I like fishing from bridges. It's a little different. I prefer to fish places that aren't too far from home. I've always been like that since I was a teenager. I used to either walk or ride my bicycle from my home to the closest river, which was Little River in Westfield, Massachusetts. A wonderful place to fish. The biggest native rainbow trout I ever caught was out of the Little River. It was 20 inches. I was on one of my breaks from college, just off the rooster tail down into the creek, well, river, it's called the Little River. It's a, it's a wide creek, about the same width as the Little Chicken Creek. It is definitely a mountain stream. It's got the clear water and the rocky bottom, all those things that you want from a creek. Just to clarify the point of these videos, I'm looking for places to fish that are close to the road, where I can just Park the scooter. Obviously, I can't really fish from the scooter, although that would be pretty cool. Really more about accessibility. Bridges are bad. Uh, culverts are good if I can find one that has enough water going underneath it. Ah, horse exhaust. Horse exhaust in the road. Okay, well, let's take both of these. The net holds these things in place, but man, they're a pain to get out. So I'm right here at the bridge. Now, last week was where I caught that beautiful creek chub that I thought at first was a brook trout. This is the same body of water just further downstream. Oh, look at that. That is a rocky bottom, perfect for various creek dwelling species. Good stuff. Slow down the ultralight and see what happens. And then I'll switch to the eagle claw in a minute or two. Oh, the wind is a little bit too much. The trick is to get this to a hole where it will be able to drop down in front of the fish. Well, that wind may be a little bit too much. I just keep landing in the, in the grass on the side. Okay, well this creek doesn't look like an opportunity for today. Alright, well it was worth a shot. It's a really pretty place. It's just that, that spot is not particularly great for the type of fishing that I want to do today on a windy day. Do I want to go that way and go further downstream or do I want to go up to where I know? Now well, Oxen Road is right here. I was going to say it's a less busy road than the one I was just on, but it doesn't seem that way. I guess this is one of the main stretches from the auto auction to the highway, so... This is the lure I had the most success with the other day. In here. Seems to be a little faster moving than it was the other day. Well, there's some pockets right there, and the sun's not in the same direction, so it's harder to see. I also don't have as heavy of a jig head on here as I had. Oh, haha! Ho ho! Hey hey! Ah! Got something on the line. Looks like a fish. Creek chub, maybe? Yeah, I think it's creek chub. Yeah, it's creek chub. <laughs> Seems to be what I tend to catch the most out of these rivers is creek chub. It'll probably be a. Uh, this will be a male. It's got tubercules along the top there. Probably ran into his nest. Pretty. They, again, they look an awful lot like a trout. They're just not. Whee! Wouldn't be surprised if what I hooked into a few minutes ago was also a creek chub. Hmm. Can't say it's been a bad day of fishing. 
to be honest, the only bad day of fishing is the day you can't go. Now, I think that is the first fish I've caught on this rod. Now, to be absolutely fair, I don't really like the action of this rod, but it's not as bad as it could be. I've had worse, not by much, but I've had worse. It reminds me an awful lot of the first fishing pole I ever had, which was a, was a fiberglass rod. All I really remember about it is that it was blue. I never caught anything on it. A couple other things that I do not like about this rod. It's got a very short handle on it. So again, it's meant to be portable. So that's why. You know, and it is. Again, I'm a little concerned about the fiberglass and when I collapse it, I'm afraid that I'm going to break it. But, you know, it, it works. And obviously it does catch fish, which is what you're looking for when you get a fishing pole. And it survives the process of catching what I would call a moderately light fish. So I don't think I'd want to use it for anything heavy like catfish or anything like that. I think that anything really heavy would damage the pole simply because it's Again, not a very heavy weight item. Successful day of fishing, because yes, I did catch a fish, but number one, I got to go. So, again, the, the Eagle Claw collapsible fishing pole that you can get places for 35 bucks. If you absolutely need something as a backup, great. It's fine for that. Uh, I personally don't think I'd use it as a primary. Well, that was a lot of fun. I had a successful fishing trip. I wonder if there's any of that puddle. It's been a really good day being out. Oh, that's nice. It's pretty red. Like a BMW? That's an older Honda or Kawasaki, I'm not sure. It's gotten a little bit chillier. Started off the day with a bit of a frog in my throat and a lot of a sniffle. So I spent the time by myself. It was nice to be by myself.